Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is my review of the Dead Air Silencer Sandman K Multi-Cal Suppressor. Those of you who have been following the channel for a while or have been in classes or seen my social media know I am a fan of Dead Air products. Um, did a review you can find on the Dead Air Sandman S. Uh, I like that can so much I bought another one. Um, I enjoy the performance out of that can as a multi-cal can. I love Dead Air's mounting system. I love the fact they use Stellite baffles. They use good coating, solid construction. They've got a, got a lot of good thermal mass to their cans, so they handle heat very, very well, at least in my experience going into this. Uh, that doesn't mean they can't reduce a product that's just gonna kinda miss the mark. So of course, when the K came out, I was very interested. I was very interested in the fact that it's a 2.9 inch suppressor uh, that adds very little length overall to your rifle. So in my mind, before even getting my hands on one, I figured it would be perfect for 14.5 inch or 16 inch guns. Usually when you put a suppressor on a rifle of one of those lengths, you, you're adding so much considerable length that it takes away a lot of your maneuverability. Now, if your rifle is just gonna be used mainly for range practice and you're not gonna do a lot of indoor maneuvering or maneuvering in tight spaces in general, that's not something you're worried about, then a K can might not, or a shorter can might not be something you're really too worried about. But eh, those of you who know with 16 inch guns and, and traditional length suppressors, that, that additional length and that front weight that it adds to the rifle, especially when most of your accessories are gonna be mounted forward anyway, uh, can start to fatigue over time. It can affect your ability to, to maintain repeat accuracy. So the idea of a short can appeal to me. My philosophy on suppressors is I want hearing safe or as close to hearing safe as I can get. Uh, a lot of cans, even though they do bring the decibel level below that pain threshold, they're still technically not hearing safe. You're still above the, what you'd call like the OSHA recommended decibel level for, for uh, extended um, uh, attenuation to the ear. And that's not necessarily a good thing. So some cans, you still should wear ear pro with them if you can. For me, the idea behind a suppressor is if I have to shoot the gun and I don't have ear pro or I don't have time to ear pro, think about a self-defense situation, a law enforcement duty patrol rifle being deployed from the car, I want something that's going to be good or net or better than a completely unsuppressed rifle. So the K really appealed to me in the fact that it was giving me a very short can. Of course, the obvious question is, and the whole point of the video is, does the sacrifice, in, or I should say the reduction in length of the K over the Sandman S um, give me a good trade-off? Am, am I getting the advantage I want while still maintaining some degree of, of hearing suppression? If you're already familiar with dead air, then you're not gonna see too much different feature-wise on the K over the S or the L. Uh, it's still their quick attach method to their muzzle devices. I'm a huge fan of their muzzle devices. I use their flash hiders on pretty much every rifle I have, or their brakes on rifles that stay suppressed all the time. I don't really like shooting brakes unsuppressed uh, because the, the advantages don't weigh, or don't outweigh the disadvantage to that. But mounting system's the same. Internally, it's pretty much the same. You've still got Stellite baffles, stainless steel, or steel construction. A lot of Good thermal mass on this can, just like there is on the uh, the Sam NS, so it handles heat very, very well. And you still have the changeable end cap, so you can go from 223 to 30 cal uh, for your multi cal. Rated up to 300 wind mag. If you want to shoot 300 wind mag through this, you can do that, just like their other cans. Um, as far as coating goes, same coating. It's still going to be their their uh, their particular batch of Cerakote. Uh, other than that, the features roughly remain the same, carrying on from the L and the S models of the Sandman. The biggest elephant in the room when it comes to quick attach suppressors, and though although their, their attachment method is a little bit more robust than some of the other quick attach methods out there, I would still consider it a quick attach because it's not a direct thread. And anything that's not a direct thread in my book is technically quick attach. Some systems are a little more intricate and a little more secure than others, but one of the biggest concerns we have with quick attach, we have two concerns. One is return to zero. If I zero the rifle with the suppressor on it, remove the suppressor, put the suppressor back on it, am I going to have a return turn to that first zero? And that's the first question. And then of course the second question is, is the suppressor itself going to reduce the accuracy of the rifle I put it on? 
Uh, I've had experience with some quick attach suppressors in the past, some quick attach suppressors recently where it took a 0.5 or a 0.75 or a 1 MOA gun and turned it into a 1.5 or a 2 or in one case a 3 MOA gun, which 3 is pretty unacceptable for a quick attach can. And that basically goes down to the fact that the can still has a degree of play on the barrel and harmonics and energy and things doing what they do affect the guide path of the bullet, which is not a good thing. So if a can is going to be quick attach, it should uh, change the point of aim, point of impact minimally. Uh, it should allow repeatability, return to zero if you're going to zero with the suppressor on like I do because most of the time my guns stay suppressed. And of course it should obviously minimally impact uh, my accuracy overall. I don't want I don't want to take a, a .5 or .75 gun and turn it into a 2 MOA or 3 MOA gun because there's cans out there that don't do it. There's no reason to buy one that does. For accuracy testing purposes I use my PWS Mark 214. It's a 14.5 inch 308. I'm shooting 168 grain Hornaday match, uh, Botel hollow point. Um, just to give you an idea, right up front, this is the accuracy of the rifle unsuppressed. This is its uh, its ability, uh, coupled with my ability to shoot it, uh, at 100 yards. So after that, I put the Sandman K on the PWS Mark 214 and I zeroed and this is my first group with the suppressor attached. I then removed the suppressor, put the suppressor back on and fired another five round group at 100 yards. My impression, the return to zero was very, very consistent. Uh, there was a slight shift, and again, that could have just been me shooting. I did, I did shoot from the exact same position, roughly at the same time of day. It was the exact same day, within 15 minutes of each other, those two groups were shot. Uh, temperature variance, those things weren't an issue. And I'm, sh I'm only shooting 100 yards, uh, so you're not gonna get, um, I guess the same sample you would if you're shooting 200 or 300 or 400, so on and so forth. Uh, but I was happy with it. I was happy with the repeatability. I also I experienced the same repeatability when I used the gun on a 5.56. I didn't film those groups, uh, but I, during the review process, I shot it on 223.556. I shot it on 7.62 by 39, and also shot it uh, a lot on 308 to give us a grand total of 2,000 rounds fired during the review process. Now. That was the accuracy. I'm happy with the return to zero that the uh, the Sandman K is going to provide me with. But next question is, is it going to be durable? Uh, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know I do the burn down. Burn down is anytime I'm doing anything really firearm related, such as uh, firearms themselves or suppressors, uh, sometimes other accessories such as bulk air groups, so on and so forth. I like to do 500 round, kind of a torture test. I want to put 500 rounds through the rifle as fast as possible, or I should in this case through the suppressor as fast as possible to simulate an accelerated life cycle. Sometimes it's not the amount of rounds you fire uh, through a firearm to, to check on its reliability and durability. It's the frequency or the, uh, the small amount of time it takes you to fire that same amount of rounds. So the 500 round burn down is done as quickly as possible. Uh, load up basically the equivalent of uh, 500 rounds of magazines. Usually takes about 17 magazines or uh, now that I'm using the Magpul D60s, life's a little bit easier except for loading them. That's kind of aggravating, uh, but they're definitely worth it. So this is the burn down. I'd say that's hot. As you can see, I got it really, really hot. 
Obviously, the length of the can uh, is an issue. I was shooting it on the uh, the Agency Arms rifle, which is a 14.5 inch pin, um, and I was able to get it well within 900 degrees using that fluke meter, and that's the measured temperature. And that temperature is going to be varied because the, the handheld thermal guns are, are not always 100% accurate. But that gives you a really good ballpark at how hot I was able to get it. And as you've seen from the video, um, the Cerakote just didn't hold up as well as I would have hoped. Uh, to the abuse the can now has a nice patina on it gives it that nice uh, used and abused but not abused to death look uh, so I'm not really gonna worry about that because my stuff is for for work and for practice it's not really for appearance and photos um, so while I'm a little miffed that the the coating coating didn't uh, stand up to the abuse it doesn't hurt my feelings that bad because they're still on there it's just taken on uh, a new color in its second life Another great thing I like about dead air cans, and the K is no different, is the fact that I can get it off the gun. Uh, there are some suppressors out there that will, once that carbon starts to atomize, especially if you're getting the gun really, really hot and you're you know, shooting a high frequency of rounds in a short period of time, the can can actually carbon lock to the gun. It makes it very, very difficult to remove. Uh, dead air's, their, their collar ratcheting system almost precludes that from even being possible. Uh, sometimes it does get a little stiff, uh, for instance, after the burn down, the ratchets were really, really tight. They were bone dry. I had burned all the lubrication out of the gun, as 900 degrees is probably going to do to almost any lubricant on the face of the earth. But I was still able to get the can off the gun. Uh, and that's kind of a small issue, but there are some suppressors out there that literally the, the manufacturer will recommend, well, if a carbon locks, just shoot it off the gun. Those of you who are familiar with the, uh, the Saker Mount debacle know that sometimes shooting your can off the gun is not a good thing, and you can end up with a baffle strike. And a baffle strike is very aggravating because of how hard it is to get a can or Paired and I mean, the whole NFA thing, and it's just aggravating, especially if you wait, you know, a year to get your can out of jail, and then the first thing you do is shoot it down range by mistake because you thought you had a positive connection and you didn't. So having to not shoot my can off the gun, uh, I definitely appreciate Dead Air for for factoring that into the design. Now we get into probably what you came here to watch this video for. How does it sound? So right up front. This is a K can. It's a below S. It's a subcompact can, if you will. It's uh, intended to give you a fighting can, whereas no can would be awful and maybe the, uh, uh, the addition of a longer suppressor just isn't feasible or it gives you the option to have a more compact weapon platform overall depending on occupation or need uh, or the environment that it's going to be used in in general. If you live in tight quarters, the shorter the can, the better the rifle is going to be able to maneuver reasonably speaking. Uh, with that in mind, the can's recommended for 14 5 point inch and longer. You can shoot on an SBRs, and I did. Uh, however, I don't really recommend that. I will say this, the can brings the decibel level down to a non-painful level, uh, but I don't think it approaches what OSHA would consider to be a hearing safe decibel level. On a 60 inch gun, it's pretty comfortable outdoors. On a 14 5 point inch gun, it's got a little bit of a bite to it. Uh, when I fired it on my, my PWS uh, Mark 111 762 by 39 it had a little bit of a little bit more bite than I would have liked, and that's probably a rifle that I wouldn't want to shoot indoors with that can attached. I fired it on an 11 inch 223 and pretty much fired about you know 10, 15 rounds and then took it off. And that's something I'm just not going to do unless I absolutely had to. And that's kind of the idea behind the can. It's a fighting can. Uh, that's, that's how Dead Air kind of describes it. Um, it's not designed to try to give you like this mystical hearing reduction with the shortest amount of can possible. That's just not feasible given the current state of metallurgy and technology. And, and until somebody makes a breakthrough in, in how to uh, use metal to dampen sound in addition to uh, the suppressor baffles to, to cool the gases to... to quiet the report of the gunshot, we're just not going to see super movie quiet cans in super short lengths, uh, which is unfortunate, but that's just the current state of things. Um, would I use this can for a duty rifle? Absolutely. Put this on a 14.5 inch duty rifle, it's better than no can, and that's kind of the idea behind it. Some people might be looking at this can as, okay, that's just going to give me the same performance of the Sam NS or the Sam NL, but it's shorter, and that's just not going to happen. So don't expect that to be a thing. If you're going to use this can for range practice, uh, I would still recommend wearing uh, at least inner ear protection or your outer ear protection. Put on your electronic ear pro. Most people buy a can so they don't have to wear ear pro, but it's still a good idea, especially for extended high rates of fire, to throw that ear pro on there. If you're going to be shooting this can indoors on any length of rifle, uh, unless it's an emergency, real-world self-defense situation or occupationally required, I would still recommend ear protection. Um, and I know some people probably don't want to hear that because this is supposed to be a suppressor, and it is. It does suppress the noise of the gunshot, so it does meet the definition of a suppressor. 
but it's not, it was never intended to give you this fantasy level or even a level of hearing reduction you're probably used to from the longer cans just because the mechanics aren't there it just can't do it um, this can isn't going to be for everybody because of that reason personally i would like to see it caliber specific i think that would give me a little bit better decibel reduction that's just my opinion based on shooting 556 dedicated cans versus multi-cal the 30 cal cans i think uh, if they made a 556 dedicated version and uh, hopefully they do in the future that would be uh, a little bit better as far as uh, the decibel reduction goes or if you shoot it and i definitely noticed when i shot it on 30 cal dedicated rounds that the hearing attenuation was a little bit better i used it a lot on the 308 the 14.5 and it, of course it's a 308 so it, you know it still had some bite to it but it was very manageable versus when I shot it on the uh, the 556. Shoot on the 762 by 39, even though that was an SBR, it wasn't that bad because it's a 30 cal round through a 30 cal can. My final verdict on the Sandman K, I do like it. I like it a lot. If you are looking for a suppressor for hunting purposes, uh, you're shooting a 16 or an 18 inch rifle in, in 308 or 556 and, and you want a can but you don't want to add the weight especially if you're doing overland hunting like you you got to walk miles and miles and miles to get where you're trying to go I would definitely recommend this can for that purpose it'd be great for that uh, it's going to give you the, the the decibel reduction for you know one or two or three shots throughout the day um, versus trying to lug a you know a 16 or an 18 inch rifle overland with a with a longer suppressor attached uh, occupationally specific law enforcement patrol rifle this would be great um, granted if if your rifle length can can permit it if you can go shorter uh, it's not a bad idea uh, to go with a longer can you know if you've got an 11 inch gun you might as well throw you know a six or seven inch suppressor on there I show you right here this is a PWS mark 114 and the PWS mark 111 the mark 114 is 14.5 inches I've got it with the same NK attached you see right below it is the uh, mark 111 with the traditional Sam NS attached and they're roughly the same length. So now I've got the same length rifle between a 14.5 and an 11.85 inch uh, rifle just based on can choices. So it can matter. Now you're not going to, again, not going to get the same hearing reduction out of the K as you do the S or the L, uh, but again, that's not the point. So for a house gun, uh, especially if you live in confined spaces, confined quarters, if you have an older house like 1950s craftsman style where the hallways are kind of narrow and you still want to use that, your default bedroom gun is going to be that AR. Uh, this is a great can for that. Uh, if you're going to be shooting a thousand round course of fire, I wouldn't do it without EarPro. Um, and of course that, you know, me, I do have hearing damage, but hearing damage is accumulative. So I still make, uh, still try to take more efforts now to say what hearing I do have left. I mean, I'm not so bad that I can't uh, understand conversation level hearing as long as there's no ambient background noise but um, not a can that you should use without EarPro for extended uh, periods of time because its main purpose is sound reduction kind of like an emergency situation that's how I see it like I've, I need the rifle right now the suppressor is attached it's no big deal it's unobtrusive it's short in length um, it doesn't affect maneuverability and if I do have to use the rifle without having time to apply ear protection it's going to give me a great degree of uh, decibel reduction over what the unsuppressed gunshot would sound like. So if that's something that you're interested in, very niche specific or mission specific suppressor, especially size, length, weight, the Sam NK is a great choice. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.